And then down here is all the crap that goes in my butt pack normally, um, with the exception of socks and that kind of thing. Um, and then some of these live in my pockets when we're out in the field and that kind of thing. Sunburn preventive cream, which I can't find a date on here, so I'm thinking it might be a post-war uh, creation, a post-war container, I mean. But it's in the same style and same printing as the Vietnam War ones, so it works. A crushed Marlboro pack, which, no, I did not smoke what came in here. Uh, I got it from a friend, and I just use it to put up on the helmet or for looks or whatever. Spoon, which it is not a sea rat spoon. It is actually a Wendy's spoon, but it's nice heavy duty, semi heavy duty plastic. And, you know, I've read plenty of accounts of guys carrying their white sea rat spoons in their pocket. So I wanted a white spoon that would work. And I went through tons of them that were cheap plastic until I found the Wendy spoon. And it's great. It hasn't broken on me yet. And if not, I'll just get a new one. Toothbrush, which this is a used toothbrush to, you know, kind of clean gunk out of the M16. That one's a new one. It's just a $30 airsoft thing. Um, still want to keep it clean, though. This, I'm not sure if this is 60s era, but it's a very basic toothbrush. So I figured, what the hell, it'll work. Bandana for a little pizzazz <laughs> around the base. Um... Just, you know, bandana. There's nothing special about it. Uh, camouflage face paint tube, which the paint is pretty much, like, dried out. But it you can still apply it, I suppose. There's light green and there's, like, a sand khaki color. It's weird. Little plastic kit with a few miscellaneous things in there. If I can get it open. There we go. Chapstick blousing bands, a little pocket knife, a little Farby LED flashlight thing, and nail clippers. Sorry, nail clippers. And it's dirty, so that's good. <laughs> GI towel, just because, you know, Vietnam, gotta have a towel, drape around your neck, it's a look. And also, these are useful for so many things. I mean, bandana's good, but this towel's just great. You drape it around your neck to keep mosquitoes away. Uh, when we throw out smoke bombs and firefights, you can wrap this around your face to protect it from the smoke and that kind of thing, because not a lot of us carry gas masks. And here's like a small thing of shaving cream, razor, uh, and a little some string, just in a big plastic bag where if we're crushing a canal or it's going to be really wet, I'll put all my crap into that bag and then in the butt pack so it stays nice and dry. It's great. And I learned that from a bad experience where everything got soaked. Yeah, don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Up here, we have the things that go in my Arvin rucksack, which Kilo 37 is documented for wearing Arvin rucksacks, Alice packs, and then in early war, the M41 haversacks, but I'll get to that later. Got a rubber lady, or rubber bitch, as was coined by a lot of the guys that used them. Don't ask me why. They just were. Um, this one's a 1980s one, but it's the same pattern as the 1960s one. And I got it for like, I think, 20 bucks at an army surplus store, so it was good. Poncho. This one is Vietnam era. I'm not, it's pretty well folded up here. I'm not sure if I'll be able to find the date on it. Um, yeah. This thing's been folded up for a while. Here we go. Yeah, this one's dated 6. 66? Yeah, 66. Right there. 19 April 66. Yeah, that's good. It's kind of dirty. That's good. Dirt is good. I mean, yes, you want to have gear semi clean and functional, but you don't want to have it too clean because then for a campaigner impression, it doesn't look good. If you're a reenactor, you should understand. Um, rucksack. Nothing too special about it. Uh, two pocket. It's on the outside. Little rivets and things to attach e tools and whatnot. Extra canteen clipped on the outside. Another M56 canteen cover. Uh, Desert Storm era canteen. Just because I didn't have 
any other good good canteens. So I just threw that in there. 2002 dated canteen, but it's the same pattern as the 60s ones. A little extra GI sock with a sea rat can and some bug netting in there. Sleeping bag cover. I don't take the whole sleeping bag out because A, I don't have one, and B, it would take up a lot of space and it wouldn't be very practical for hot summer nights. So I just use this. It keeps the bugs off of me and it's something to kind of bundle up in if I need to. Um, keep, yeah, mainly it keeps the bugs out when I'm trying to sleep. Put the poncho over me if need be and the rubber mattress under me. And that works. And another thing with the rubber mattress, uh, a lot of guys use those to float their gear across canals or waterways if they had the, the choice to. A lot of times they just have to wade through and suck it up. M16, little airsoft one, $30 Amazon purchase. Um, nothing too special about that. A MRE accessories pack. This is a modern one, so this packaging for the coffee is obviously not correct. Um, wet nap towelette thing. I do don't think that labeling would be correct for, for Vietnam. Excuse me, um, but you know it works. Other than that, most of this is pretty authentic to what would have came in the accessories pack for seat rations or anything like that. Because you got the waterproof matches, you got sugar, Tabasco sauce is a biggie. A lot of guys we talk to a couple veterans and they say you know they use the Tabasco sauce to make their rations taste a lot better. Cream, salt, little uh, toilet paper in here, mints, and then caramel candies, and then just the bag it came in. Uh, waterproof notebook, uh, which they had things similar to these in Vietnam, uh, where the paper was meant to go through a wet climate. There's just all my crap that's written in here. We are uh, Kilo Anthem, which is the music we wrote that to. It was uh, Blood on the Risers. Kind of our own twist on the Airborne, 101st Airborne World War II song, only it's about Vietnam and it's about Kilo 37. It's kind of fun. And Claymore bag, just to carry extra supplies in. And then firefights carry fireworks and other boom boom things in there. And then some early war gear over here, which I don't wear that much. M41 haversack, which Law Marines had these earlier in the war. There's an original I got off eBay for about 30 bucks. And then kind of belt rig with an incorrect jungle first aid pouch. It's nylon that should be canvas. Two M61 ammo pouches on a M61 belt and M41 M42 suspenders I can't remember which but yeah early war suspenders same style suspenders worn by Marines in World War II were again used in early Vietnam for many if not all Marines and yeah that's ugh, that's pretty much all the gear uh, like I said, there'll be another video with uh, dealing with uniforms, and you'll get to see all that, and hopefully I didn't miss anything, and if not, and if I did, I will put that in the next video. See ya.